Okay, this is just a quick video. Um, uh, you know I've been working on that Tamiya figure, the Let War uh, German Infantry set. And uh, yeah, I was quite impressed with the quality and definitely impressed with the improvement. So I thought I'd go back and look at some Master Box figures, which um, I have used in the past. Um, and they're, ver they're usually very good animation wise, but they have, they have a couple of drawbacks. And uh, I bought this box here, which is um, it just says German Military Man, 1945. Let's stop them here. Is the name of the actual product. Um, so it's of the same period as the uh, Tamiya set, and you can see the figures here, the Saltban and so on, and these camouflage jackets and and whatnot, right? So I looked at these different figures and I thought, well, that guy there looks perhaps most like the uh, Tamiya figure. So I started working on him and let's see. There's that part of him. You can see the detail and so on that's on there. There's a little bit of filler here and there. We need another bit. But it, it, this part of the figure was pretty easy. The two legs are separate. Then there's this front and back of this lower part of the Zeltban and his torso and two separate arms. He's a bit fiddly and he doesn't have any, unlike the Tamiya figure, doesn't have any um, locating marks. However, of this is the real issue. This is his head, yeah. You can see in the, um, well, let's see, let's zoom back out again. You can see in this picture of him, he's holding this ammunition box, that he's just got a helmet on with the um, uh, strap and nothing else. But on here, let's zoom in a good bit, there's this strange line all the way down his face. It doesn't appear to be any kind of... Um, face covering or anything. It's sort of where the uh, face mask would go. It, like your face doesn't look too bad, it's quite detailed and everything. Um, but this line kind of ruins it. So let me just uh, show you what I propose to do to address the situation. Be back in just a second. Okay. Right, just to show you that where his head joins his body, it's a fairly flat and a simple area to join onto. Don't have to do much to get that head to fit on there. His head, and this is how it, this is how his head looks, where it joins on. Right, so that's that, but I can't really, I don't want to use that head necessarily because it looks a bit of a mess. So I've got these alternative heads from Hornet. This one here is five heads wearing plain German helmets. Hopefully you'll be able to, I know there's a lot of light shining on everything, but you can see um, the faces on these or, I mean, you can see his chin strap and the helmet and everything um, on that one head. And they're all pretty good. They got That one's got a, like that rubber band thing, is it? Or I should got binoculars on. Plain German helmets, it says, but that one does have something on his helmet. And so on. But they look pretty good. That's one set. I've also got uh, this one, also from Hornet, the last ditch Volkstrom uh, head, 1945. I thought I could possibly use these because obviously these are the end of the war. Oops, sorry, camera. And I could um, you know, make them, there's people with young faces and old faces. Like this guy here with the helmet on. So we can, yeah, sorry I didn't take these out of the bag, but I didn't. <laughs> okay, and that's that. And then I've also got uh, this five heads around WW2. German helmet with uh, SS camouflage cover. 
Well, it just looks like a uh, sort of a, a wrapper. If you look at, let's see, that guy's face. If you can see that, hopefully. Let me get another one. This one here. It's a fairly plain uh, armor covering. You can paint that up. I can paint that up with camouflage colors and so on. Then here's another one. Um, five heads wearing German helmets with improvised coverings. And um, what we get in here is kind of netting. Let's take some of these out. Because they're already opened. I'll show you all of these. Okay, again, just a, that's HTG H20. I think this range is discontinued now. So, let's zoom in. You can see you're going to get a good bit of detail on there on this helmet. Um, this can make all the difference to a figure, so that's one. Two. You can see the word is, uh, helmet cover is tied on, but it doesn't go right to the rim of the helmet. And I believe they're little pins, sort of metal pins, to clip onto the helmet. I don't see them there, but I think I've seen them in the in the actual uniforms. There's head number three, same sort of thing. Different face, different looking face. Okay. Three. And here's a different guy again. This guy's got netting over his uh, helmet. Get a good look at his face there. Okay, but it's well to find muscles in his neck. There's a little tiny bit of clean up there, but it doesn't look like much. And I think this is the last one. It's another one with a uh, sort of straps to hold on, whatever it is you might want to hide your helmet in. And that's his face. Okay. So what I intend to do, probably, is replace this little distorted head with with one of those heads. Not necessarily those ones I just showed you, but maybe one of the other ones. Okay, well then I'll show you how I've done that later. You have to use super glue, by the way, to attach these resin figures to uh, resin heads to the plastic. Okay, I'll leave it there. See you next time. Bye. Okay, back again. I've uh, trimmed his head, his neck, and glued him in place. Let's do a close-up. There's a little bit of a gap there. Not too much. You could see a little super glue. Okay, so you can see that's what his hair is going to look like. It's going to look like now, huh? compared to this one. As I said before, the um, uh, Master Box head, the face is not bad, but it's it's just all this other stuff. Anyway, it's just an opportunity to uh, try something different, personalize these figures a bit as well. It's just part of the hobby to put in your mark on things. This back looks a bit rough. Okay, so that's that. Okay, this is his ammo crate. There's, his, you know, there's a tiny little bit of flash along there. Some connecting marks there.
Okay, I think that's that's okay now. There's these two Ryan marks on the bottom. I'm not hundred percent sure if they're meant to be there or not. It could be there for um like if you stand this box up on the ground. Alright, that's that. Let's have a look at this uh ammo pouch. That was sprue connection point. So apart from that, there's no other flash on that part. Here's his other ammo pouch. There's the mark there as well. Sometimes um, you can spend ages cleaning things up and then you're pretty sure you've got everything. But when you're painting it, the mold lines and such, it's not that they reappear because obviously they're always there, but you don't see them when you're, um, until you start painting it. Maybe until the paint catches them. Hmm. Little scratch there. Let's get rid of it. All in all though, there's not, not much flash on these parts. This is bread bag. So that's done, put it over there. Then here's his uh, gas mask holder. It sure it hasn't. It almost looks like it should have. Like a part to go there and there. Okay. And here's his canteen. Right, that's that. And you can hopefully see the level of detail on that. Okay. Alright, now that's all these uh, little accessories. Well, actually, no, it isn't. I've got this. A, I think it's called STG44. <laughs> I'll just do that one while I'm, while I'm here. I do tend to leave this off uh, during assembly. Make it easier to paint. That's gone. Well, that looks like a ejector. Injection pen mark is there. And again, it's the same on the other side. But I think we can get away with that because one side will have the, um, the strap 
and the other side will be hidden, I think. I don't think it's meant to be there anyway. Okay, so that is all the little parts now. Back in a second. All right, I'm just looking at this am ammunition uh, holder. I'm not entirely sure where it's meant to go. It sort of looks right about there and then It also seems to match with the what's on the box. There's a circle at the top. It, I was sort of thinking that little dot, a little sort of bracket might be attached to it, but I don't think so. Sure, it's attached securely. So I can look at the other one. Go about there. Okay, that's his ammunition pouches. Then next bread bag, I think. I'm just looking at the uh, illustration. Yes, bread bag is going to go about there. Yeah, I can go there this time. A good amount of glue on there, then just slide it into place. I hope it's that the gas mask holder is over here. Let's see. Just gonna fit it in in there. Just sit it there. Apply some glue. I'm just running some glue over the ends where I had those uh, connecting marks. Right. Then looking at, um, okay, I'm looking at the instructions. We've got the canteen, and it's going to go on the bread bag. I think probably. In the illustration it's about there so let's put it there I'm not very good with the tweezers so I do tend to just 
Use my fingers. And the way Nazara is sometimes. Get them to fit. Okay, so you can see that's all the equipment that he's got on his back. We've got the gun and we've got the um, this ammunition crate. It's going to fix here. Now, I'm looking at this ammunition crate and it really has a handle um, on it. So really, should take that off, but as it's there, I'm just going to leave it, I think. Just look at the the box art. See which way, is there a particular way around that ammunition case is meant to go? I can't really tell from the box. Uh, let's put it that way. No, actually, it's change my mind. Let's put it that way. Okay. It's very small connecting points there, so. So perhaps want to lean it up against his body. Which I have done. Oops. Off he comes. I have it that way. Okay, and apart from his gun, which I'm not going to attach at this stage, I think that's at least everything attached. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, well, here's a little figure. Oh, I've uh, drilled a hole in his foot. You can you should be able to see there, I think. I put a piece of uh, florist wire in it. Super glued it. So he's on this base. Well, he's ready for uh, undercoating now. And, um, yeah, like comparing him to the this Tamiya figure. Hopefully, you can see. He's pretty good. pretty good. Pretty good, pretty easy to assemble. Some fiddly little parts. It's the odd compromise, like making the ammo box lean against his. Uh, um, clothing for support um, you know swapping his head actually that was quite a big uh, compromise I suppose and there's a bit more flash on him than there is on the uh, uh, Tommy figure but obviously when they're when they're sort of uh, finished or nearly finished just you can't really tell the difference. The difference is in the making. I went to one model show once and I was asking this guy if he had a Tamiya kit of something or other. And he said, uh, it was a really old guy, and he said, uh, oh, we've got far better ones than Tamiya. And I said, what do you mean better than Tamiya? Because everything on Tamiya goes together dead easy and, you know, it's." 90% accurate for most things at least <clears throat> and he went yeah but I've got lots of kits where you've got to make all the bits yourself and you've nothing quite fits so you've got to, got to fill it up you know that's what model making is all about and um, I thought it was quite interesting because this that's not really what model making is all about for me I do quite I like making kits but I really like uh, painting them I suppose bit more 
Okay, anyway, that's a little anecdote. That's a year or two ago. That old bloke told me that. Okay, see you then.